Hello everyone, um, I'm Ed Zuberbuehler and I'll be wrapping up our uh, Shepherd's Fruit Salad series uh, that you we've had over the last month or two and uh, kind of excited about that but um, I gotta tell you this uh, I haven't looked forward to this so much just sitting in front of a, a camera and I have no idea uh, have I not have not done this so uh, it's hard to tell how it's going to turn out I don't plan on doing any retake so you're going to see the bloopers and everything um, anyway uh, I'm going to talk uh, as wrapping up uh, uh, we're going to talk about um, self-control and I got to tell you um, I just had a self-control moment where I lost it just a little bit uh, on the way over this morning uh, passing the high school, I saw photographs of all the graduating seniors lined up and down Taze Valley Road. And I got to tell you, uh, it got to me a little bit. Um, I've never been good. I, I guess I, I, I'm like a lot of parents this time of year, but I get it every year working with the youth. I just hate to uh, see our seniors go. But I'm happy to send them off knowing uh, we've equipped them uh, with God, uh, knowledge, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of uh, losing a little bit of self-control, uh, so, so what is it that Paul's talking about when he talks about self-control here in Galatians uh, 5? And let's just read, let's go ahead and turn to uh, Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23, and I'm sure you've heard this a few times by now, uh, but I'll read again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Um, so anyway, uh, we're, we're now at the, the self-control part. I'm sure like uh, you, I've, I've needed a little bit of self-control during this time of uh, being restricted. Um, and I'm just glad things are, are at least showing and moving toward normalcy again. Uh, will even be, and by the time you get this, uh, see this, I'm sure our church doors will have been opened and uh, we'll be moving closer to being normal. Um, anyway, uh, so, so what is Paul talking about when he talks about self-control? And, you know, he gives us a good example of, and lets us know by showing us what self-control doesn't look like. And uh, let's just read in verses, just, just a, a verse or two before where we just read. And uh, so let's look at Galatians 5, 16 through 21. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So he gives us right off the bat uh, something here, and it's uh, gratifying the desires of the flesh. Um, and boy, the list can get really long. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now here we go. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. So the list is nowhere near exhaustive there. Um, but you get the idea. So, so basically, uh, uh, Paul is saying that it's these sinful desires we have is where we need this self-control. And I really like the way Solomon described it in uh, Proverbs 25, uh, verse 28. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. 
You know, when I first read that, the first image that came to my mind was, and I'm sure we've all done this, uh, I even do it now. Uh, when you go to the beach, you get down close to the water and you build you a sandcastle and hopefully the tide's coming in because it makes it a little more interesting. But uh, the, as the waves wash up, it gets closer and closer to your sandcastle and then you've got to build a wall to protect the sandcastle. So you build this nice wall and the water keeps coming in and coming in and pretty soon it washes over the wall and the next thing you know the wall's gone and the water comes in and then the castle just starts to melt. And I kind of picture that going on here when we don't have self-control. And by the way, that list that Paul just put together is basically what folks look like when they don't have the influence of the Holy Spirit. So uh, anyway, we all know, uh, and, and I want to add to that list, at least to the things that I see and maybe you see today, uh, when those walls of self-control get flooded, get broken down. And uh, I just made a short, short list only because I ran out of paper. Uh, it's at the bottom of my page. The list could go on and on, but, but that, uh, that brokenness... Um, you know, results in broken homes and marriages, addictions of all kinds, substance abuse, sexual abuse, child abuse, spousal abuse, pornography, lost jobs and income, words of regret, hate, obesity, pregnancy out of marriage, STDs, suicide, and on and on. Um, and, and, and it's funny, the only, not funny, but... Um, the only person I've ever known to kick alcoholism, a very, very dear friend of mine, and he, in his own words, he traded the bottle for Jesus. Uh, he's actually now a pastor, uh, an incredible story, and we should never, ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is God in us, the power of God in us, and I've seen it in action. Uh, and self-control is simply the ability to say no to the sinful desire of our flesh. Our flesh is a funny word. We don't, it, it, maybe it was something they used back then, but we're simply talking about the desires of our body that we have. And, um, but it's not that simple. It's just not simple to de to deny our bodies that. Um, if it was, I guess we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. So uh, how does the Holy Spirit uh, bring about, about fruit in our lives? And uh, I guess the simple answer is however he wants. Um, and that may be different for all of us. Uh, some of it may be miraculous. Others, like myself, may have to work at it a little bit. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and one way the Holy Spirit has worked in my life, uh, to keep me out of trouble is that he always reminds me of the consequences of the decisions I'm about to make. Uh, he makes it very clear that I could be in very bad trouble if I give in to this desire or that desire. And it, it usually keeps me in check. Uh, and I think um, it's also important, at least for me, to understand that, that self-control is just that. It's really not God control. Um, God doesn't twist my arm to make me listen to him. Uh, usually the consequences of a bad decision speak loud enough. But um, Paul tells us that we have a responsibility uh, in this. And, and it's right here in this passage of Scripture uh, in Galatians 5, 22 through 23 uh, that we find it. And let me quickly just go over uh, a few of them. Um, in verse 16, Paul tells us we're to walk by the Spirit. Um, so there's an action there. Uh, verse 18, we are to be led by the Spirit. Verse 25, uh, live by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit. So there is responsibility on our part. Um, when we receive the Holy Spirit, uh, 
when we um, when we ask Jesus to take charge of our lives, when we follow Him, uh, the Holy Spirit resides in us. But that doesn't mean we can't ignore Him, and and that's what happens a lot of times. Um, so, um, what's what's a uh, What's that look like day to day? You know, that walking and being led by the Spirit. And, and I, I, I really just can only speak for myself, uh, how I've experienced the Holy Spirit in my life. And it's been a process over time. It's, it, it, it didn't happen uh, immediately. I wished it would have because uh, it has, th- this growth process usually involves a lot of hurt. And um, it would be nice if we didn't have to have that. Uh, but, uh, but it began for me by learning God's Word and knowing God's Word long, long ago right here in this church. Uh, I, I made a commitment to know what was in God's Word. And, um, and then right here also in this church, having uh, godly people uh, teach me and encourage me uh, was integral in in that, and uh, and over time, and mostly through prayer, um, I fell in love with my Savior. Losing control again. Sorry. Um, so. Uh, I want to I want to read something uh, from John, and uh, so, um, to kind of help explain that, and uh, and how that worked in my life. Um, let's go to John 15, and I'm going to start with uh, verse uh, four. And these and this is Jesus speaking, John 15, verse four through nine. Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. For I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, there's that word thing, uh, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And here it is. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Isn't it interesting, through all of that, Jesus ends with a simple three-letter, or three or four-word closing, abide in my love. And for me, that's been the key, is, is abiding in love. And, and here's why, is, as you know, if you love somebody, you want to please them. If you love somebody, you don't ever want to let them down. And, and, and that's the way it's been for me. Um, and, 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 and it comes from the Spirit. All of this comes from the Holy Spirit. My ability to even recognize Jesus and to love him comes from the Spirit. So I see the Spirit working in me. And let me tell you, when I mess up, uh, not only is there external consequences usually, but there is this internal grief and remorse I experience, which is far greater usually than any external Um, And it's because I've left my Savior down. Uh, So for me, it's been the love um, that has kept me in check. 
Um, and, and, and my prayer uh, every day usually ends with asking God to keep me from the evil one. And in my words, the way I usually put it is, Lord, please keep me from myself. And what I'm really asking is for self-control. And it's a and it's a daily thing, as as Paul put it, it's a walk step by step. Um, so in wrapping up, um, I've got four things that I've learned from this series, and I just wanted to share with you really quickly. Uh, Paul talks about the fruit of the spirit. It's single singular. It's not fruits of the spirit. So, so the bearing of fruit is all of these, these nine things. It's not, it's here we're not talking about a gift or something you're going to excel in just one or the other, that when the Holy Spirit is in you and working, you should see these things, all of them, equally happening. Uh, you may have to deal with, with some more than others, but it's a package deal. Uh, number two is... Uh, the Holy Spirit is working in us to transform us into the likeness of God. And that makes perfect sense because the fruits were exhibited that, that Paul talks about. Here. Jesus exhibited them better than any human that ever lived. Um, and, and, it, it, and it is the essence of God, uh, these fruits. Uh, it's his character. Um, and I'd like to read uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, just like Pastor Jeff says. Oh, you need a verse for that. Okay. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Uh Another thing, number three, uh, is expect failure. Uh, and, and I'd like to go to Romans 7, uh, verses 21 through 25 for that. Uh, Paul speaking. So I, so I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. Does that sound familiar? Uh, but I see in my members, my body, another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man am I. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. What tension Paul describes occurring in his body uh, with this battle of wanting to do right, but failing. But, number four, right on the heels of expect failure, um, don't accept failure. And I'd like to read out of Philippians 3, uh, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus had made me his own. What Paul is talking about is perfection in Christ that he's seeking uh, and pressing on toward. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love this verse because Paul is simply saying, good or bad, I'm forgetting what's behind me. What counts is, and I love the words he used, he's straining forward and he's pressing on. That, in, that implies effort and work and not giving in. 
There's nothing in there that says I should accept my failures. Um, anyway, I hope uh, God has, has challenged you through this series and uh, has encouraged you through this series. Um, and imagine how much better our church would be, the world would be, if we could grasp hold of the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and I, I would say that we all need to press on toward that goal. Uh, join me in prayer as I close. Father, we thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, God in us. Oh, thank you so much that we are not left to our own desire, to our sin, uh, that we have hope. And Father, we thank you so much for the one who has made this possible. In the name of Jesus, amen.